One of the absolute most common questions that I get is what is the difference between the rigid panels and the flex panels? So today in this video, we're gonna be going over all of the differences, what the pros and cons are of each setup and find out which type of solar panel will be best for you. The very first thing that we're going to do is actually a power production test. I've got two rigid 100s and two flex 100s and what we're going to be testing is the combined power output between the two panels. It's almost a perfectly clear sunny day. We've got just a tiny bit of clouds uh, and we do have a bit of smoke from the California fires so it's not perfect perfect conditions but it's pretty dang close. So we're going to see what kind of power production we're getting. Right now we're connected to the rigid panels so let's go see how much power it's making. Okay, we see right now we're at 82%. You don't want to do tests like this when you're at 100% because there's no room for that energy to go into the battery. You want to make sure it's discharged a little bit, so that's what I've done. Got my watt meter, it's already starting to go up. So the rigid panels currently are making about 168. So for the conditions, it makes perfect sense. Uh, that's right on par with what I think they should be at. Now we're going to test to see how the Flex 100 are doing. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect these cables. And with these MC4 connectors, there's just two little tabs in here. I just pinch my fingers and the cable comes right out. Very easy to use. Connect that here. And here. All right, let's go see how much it's making. Okay, so we can see here, it's making 164, 163, call it 165. It was just shy of 165. So they're almost making the exact same amount of power. So as far as power production goes, there's really no difference. The rigid panels have just a slight edge, but as we can see, both of them are performing very well for a day like today. I'm very happy with those numbers. So now that we know that these basically make the exact same amount of power within a couple of watts of each other, it really comes down to how you're planning on using the solar panels. Now, in most cases, the rigid panels are gonna be the best way to go. But many people like the flex panels because of their portability. So the real reason you would use the flex panels or get something like a flex kit which includes the flex 100 panels is you're basically focused on portability. It's something that you're not gonna be using at home very often. It's something that you need to be able to grab and go. Say if there's a hurricane or tornado or flood or even just a normal blackout, something like that. You want ultimate portability, then these are the way to go. These are only about five pounds each and you can see they actually are flexible. So what that means is that these will pack away into a solar panel carry case very easily. You can easily fit about five of these into either the standard or deluxe panel carry case. And because they're only five pounds each, you're only carrying a total of 25 pounds. So it's really not that bad moving it around. The other really nice thing about the Flex 100 panels, and one of the reasons I recommend these more than any other solar panel, is because of the special ETFE finish. Now it might be a little bit hard to see, but you can hear as I run my nails on this, there's kind of a bumpy noise, right? It's not perfectly smooth. Now these bumps serve many purposes. One, that's the ETFE finish. But one of the other cool things that these bumps do is it actually takes the light and acts like a little mini magnifier, which then allows these cells to make more power, makes it more efficient rather than just having a flat surface. One of the other things that's very special to the Flex 100 panels is you can see how many bus bars are going across each cell, as well as how tight the cells are. So here we've got two, four, six, eight, nine bus bars going on each of these cells, which means that they're gonna work a lot better and make better power. So that's something you don't see in a lot of other solar panels. You may even just get three or four bus bars. So that's one reason why the Flex 100s are uh, my favorite out of all of the other flexible solar panels on the market. Now the major downside to the Flex 100 panels is that they are flexible. If I grab it right here on this cell, I will crunch this cell. If I'm not being very careful in handling it, I can very easily damage the panels. So that's one of the main reasons why it's recommended to have panel carry cases for this, because then you can have all five panels in a case and then you're carrying the case not grabbing the individual cells. And pretty much you always want to have it either secured to the ground, not on grass, or at least anything you're not willing to kill because any vegetation underneath will get killed. Uh, it's best to have it on some sort of stand like this. And I do have another video that shows you how to build this really easy stand. This stand works great for the Flex 100 and the Rigid 100 panel, but these are fragile. If you're not very careful with them, it's really easy to crack the cells and make it not work so well. 
and that's just a bad thing overall. So just to recap, the pros, only five pounds, meant for portability, has the ETFE special finish, high quality bus bars, monocrystalline, so it's really good all for portability. Cons, fragile. Not going to last more than five years most likely. Now when it comes to the rigid 100 panels, the biggest reason why I recommend these more than the flex panels and why most people like these is because of their durability. I've actually walked on top of these panels without damaging them. Now that's definitely something I'm not recommending. They are not designed for that, but I wanted to see if it would take my weight and it definitely does. You can walk on the flex 100 panels as well as long as they're on a perfectly hard surface. If they're on anything that's soft or gives, you will crack the cells. It is not recommended to walk on them, but you technically can. So really the big pros for the Ridge of 100 are first of all, the durability. They too are also monocrystalline. These also have nine bus bars, which is again, a very rare thing in many solar panels. And with the bus bars, these are a little bit different. You can see a large bus bar here, and then there's bus bars on the back. You can see just the little lines of the bus bars there. And you can see those lines run up to here onto this big bus bar. And that's what all goes into the connector box in the back here. One of the other pros is that these are still very lightweight in my opinion. 16 pounds is very easy to manage. I can easily pick this up one-handed. It's really not heavy. The other thing that I like is because it has the rigid frame, it naturally gives me a handle in which to carry this. The flex panels, I've gotta be super careful. And with the rigid panels, I can just grab it and I know it's gonna be well protected and I'm not gonna be damaging anything. If it gets bumped or anything like that, nothing's gonna happen to it at all. If I was doing this to the flex panels, those cells would be cracking. The biggest benefit is that these are gonna last 25 years quite easily. Because they're encased in the aluminum and tempered glass, these are not gonna degrade. And these don't need the ETFE finish because it has the glass. So the ETFE finish only applies to the Flex 100 panels. The biggest downside to these panels is they're not as light as the Flex 100 but I still don't feel that these are heavy, but at 16 pounds are definitely heavier than the flex panels. Generally speaking, I only recommend having about two rigid panels per panel carry case. So that's right about 30 pounds. That's still pretty manageable. Because of their weight, it's not easy to put these panels on a rack like this and then pick up the whole rack and move it. With the flex panels, that's doable because your total weight with the rack and the panels is right around 35 pounds. But doing that with the rigid panels, you're much closer to about 100 pounds. That's a lot harder to do. So one of the questions I get sometimes is why I don't use these foldable 100 watt panels. Now there's a couple of reasons why. Ugh. First of all, is they're actually heavier than these 100 watt panels. These come in right about 22 pounds, but the big advantage is that they have these extending legs. So that's really cool that the stand is built into it. The majority of the panels that I've tested like this that are foldable usually have a little PWM charge controller here on the back as well. So it makes it really difficult to link these together in series in order to get good power out of them. So basically what I find is that most companies that sell a solar generator with a foldable panel, at most you're getting one to two of the panels, which we all know isn't enough power to recharge your system in a day. It's not gonna run your fridge, it's not gonna run your solar generator and actually make it usable for a blackout type situation. It's good for camping, it's good for running a DC refrigerator, but more than that, it's not gonna do much for you. So whereas I really like the idea of these legs sticking out here and the easy handle here, all of that, one, the weight, it actually makes it harder to take with you because of the weight, but secondly, the price. These things are like 320 bucks each. That's about twice the price of one of these panels. So whereas these are pretty cool and they work pretty okay, they're not something that I can usually recommend. And just looking on here, we can actually see the bus bars on here. We've got one, two, three. So again, this has three times the amount of bus bars as something like this. And you can even see like here, we've got these diamond shapes in between the cells, where here we just have these tiny little triangles. So you actually get a lot more cells on here than you do on something like this. So that is why I generally don't recommend something like this. They just, I just haven't found them to be very good at all for real world usage. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you coming and watching my videos. I try to make this as clear and easy to follow as possible. I pay for all of this stuff out of my own pocket. These are not things that I'm receiving for free. That way you get a full honest review. I truly appreciate the thumbs up as well as all of you who are subscribing to my YouTube channel. So don't forget to click the subscribe button, click the bell, that way you get notified with new videos. Please comment down below if you have any questions or even the best way to get a hold of me is by email, which is info at poweredportablesolar.com. 
solarpanelsmyshop.com. You'll get a hold of me directly. And if you're interested in these solar panels or the solar generator kits that I recommend, you can visit poweredportablesolar.com and get more information as well as the best pricing there. So please don't hesitate to reach out. There are no stupid questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time.